Aloha everybody, this is Gigi from Kauai Community College. Today I will be talking about model drawing in terms of using it to bridge into algebra. So using model drawing to introduce a variable and um, write an equation to solve a word problem. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here we go. Variables and equations, a model drawing approach. Um, let remind ourselves at the step-by-step -step instructions on how to use model drawing. Okay, so first, read the problem, of course, and then rewrite the question in the problem as a complete sentence, leaving a blank for your answer. For example, if the question is asking how old is she, then you would write she is blank years old, right? Um, number three is identify who and what are involved. And for this lesson, this is very important. This relates to how you would define a variable. And then step four, to draw a unit bar, it doesn't matter how big, to model which each of the variable, and then you are going to go ahead and reread the problem, chunk it down, adjust the unit bar to match the information, and then fill in your question mark for whatever the question is asking. And then step five, previously, we had compute the problem by doing some uh, arithmetic, some division, you know, addition, multiplication, whatever you gotta do. But here in this video, Step number six would be to define your variable. And um, so step six here would be to define your variable and then to write an equation, okay? Um, and then step six is go ahead and answer the question and make sure that the answer makes sense. Okay, so here we go. Um, how does this work? Suppose um, you are in an algebra class and it's asking you find the sum of three consecutive positive integers um, where the sum is, um, find three consecutive integers where the sum is 114. Well, consecutive integers mean one after another. So to go from one to the next, as we can see here, like the number 12, 13, and 14, to go from one to the next, you just have to add one because it's right after the other right so 13 is right after 12 so it's just one unit apart so you'll add one right um so let's use model drawing here um to actually come up with that equation to solve okay um answer sentence always right Leaving it blank, the three integers, consecutive integers are blank, blank, and blank. And then who and what are involved? Well, we have integer one, integer two, and then integer three. And then we have a starting point. They all start at the same spot. Um, and then you draw your unit bar. Okay, how big? Doesn't matter. You're gonna adjust it. Um, well, Right now, the picture shows that they are all of the same size, but we know that they are not because they're one after another. And again, to go from one after another, we are adding one, right? Adding one because it's one unit apart. So if the red bar is integer one, then integer two would be red bar plus one, right? And then integer three would be just like integer two, except for that you're gonna go ahead and add one more because it's right after integer two. Make sense? Yeah, let's stare at the picture and see that. Now, um, our job, the sum is 114. Okay, that's what the question said. So our job now in an algebra class is to go ahead and define what a variable is. Okay, so a variable is um, a, um, a letter that you use to represent an amount, and that amount is 
always consistent in the same story. Wherever you see it, it, it stays, right? Let's say if X is 10, then it's going to be 10 the whole story, no matter what. Okay? So in this visual here, we can see that the red bar is the thing that is consistent in all of the integers, right? So we're going to call integer 1 that variable X. Okay? Now, so all the red bars would be X consistently in all integers. So if we say let x represent integer 1, then integer 2 would be represented by x plus 1, and then integer 3 would be represented by x plus 1 plus 1, which is x plus 2. So here it said the sum is 114, so if we add them all together, that's 114, and that gives you an equation right here. Okay. Um, and if you think about addition, um, addition is just, just count like terms, right? Um, put them all together and count how many. So if I put these all together and count how many, I could see 3x plus 3 is equal to 114. And the process of solving an equation is just to go backwards. So um, order of operations said, um, addition subtraction is after multiplication or division. So when I go backward, I'm going to go ahead and subtract three first. And when we subtract three, we would do that through both sides. So three X is 111 and X is divided by three. 111 divided by three is 37. So we can see here that X is 37. If X is 37, then x plus 1 would be 38, and then x plus 2 would be 37 plus 1 plus 1, and that would be 39, right? So the concept, the idea of a variable is that it represents a number. In this case, we found out that that number is 37. So to answer the question, the three consecutive integers are 37, 38, and 39. And if you add them up, that should give you 114. Right? Okay, so I'm going to have you read this and pause the video, try the model drawing, and, and try to um, come up with the variable that you want to define and write an equation. So, pause right now. Okay, so when you come back, we will have something like this. The question said, Liliana, how many fish does she caught? And did she catch, right? So she caught blank fish. Who and what are involved? You have Scotty, Liliana, and Hunter, and they all start out at the same place. Okay, um, put a unit bar up. And the question said that, um, Scotty caught twice as much as Hunter, right? So then you would say, well, um, Hunter's bar is half the size of Scotty. And that's, that's our, our thinking, that's our chunking process, okay? We read the words and we translate to what it means in terms of the bar model, okay? And then um, Liliana caught 20 more than Hunter, so same purple bar plus 20, right? And all together, they caught 180. So to be consistent, to really show that Hunter, it, um, Scotty is twice as Hunter, I'm gonna go ahead and put those up. Now, we can see that that consistent unit that is there, right, was in the red bar. So the red bar is not necessarily our X. It really is um, the purple bar because that's the thing that is consistent in this story. So let X be how many fish Hunter caught. Then Liliana, 
will have caught x plus 20, and then Scotty would have caught 2x amount of fish. Okay, then all together you have the equation x plus x plus 20 plus 2x is 180. And if we can count up the x's, meaning count the like terms for addition, you would have 4x plus 20 is 180. And again, solving an equation is to go backward. So we would go ahead and subtract 20 to both sides. 4x is 160 divided by 4, x is 40. So we know that this right here is now 40, this is now 40, this is 40 and 40. So to answer the question, Liliana would have caught 40 plus 20, which is 60 fish. Awesome. All right. So here's another typical algebra problem. Uh, and people really have a hard time with this here. Um, but don't worry, just, just slow down. That's what model drawing allows you to do, is to think about the process and the relationship between the numbers and the information that is given to you, right? So perimeter is 340R, 340. The length is 50 yards longer than the width and find the dimensions of the field. Okay, so stop the video and try that on paper on your own. Once you have done that, we can check your solution with this. Okay, so the answer should be, the answer sentence should be the dimensions are length by length. What is involved here? We have the length, the width, and the parameter. That's what the story is talking about. Okay, we'll put a bar up. But wait, that's not what the story said. Okay, the length and the width are not the same, right? So let's reread the problem. Um, we know that the parameter as the first sentence said, is 340. And the length is 50 more than the width. So we're going to add 50 into there, right? And the perimeter is 340. Now, how do we calculate the perimeter? What goes into that dotted box right there, okay? So if you go around the rectangle, you have the length, the width, the length, right? The width. But wait, there's another length. And another width. That's what a perimeter is, is to go around the boundary of the shape, right? And that is 340. Now, if you look at the model, um, what is that one unit that is consistent in your story? And that is what we would call x, right? So I'm going to go ahead and mark the question. The question is, what's the dimensions, which means we're looking for the width and the length. And then we would go ahead and define x as the width. And so the length must be x plus 50. And then the perimeter must be x plus 50 plus x plus x plus 50 plus x go all around the boundary that's what the perimeter is and that has to equal to 340 so your equation would be for x is equal to um, plus 100 is equal to 340 right then we solve for x so 
So x is 60. So the width here is 60. So this x right here now represents 60. All right, so that's the variable that is consistent in all of your story. So to answer the question, the dimensions would be 60 by 110. Okay, so don't skip that process. That right there is really important. Defining your variable so that you can come up with your equation. And how do you define your variable? Just, just go ahead and look at the model that you have there. Um, X should be calling out at you because that's that consistent unit throughout the story. Okay, here is a challenge problem for you. And you can pause the video and try, but it is it for me here. So keep on modeling. I will see you next time.